However, we have the Formula 2 cars out on the track at the moment for the Pingle Homes Australian Formula 2 Championship Round 6. And to have a look at the grid, Neil Crompton. Thank you, Mike. And as the cars come out onto the circuit, the grid on the front row, John Crook, pole position, 50.3, sharing that front row with Derek Pingle. The second row of the grid, Arthur Abrahams and Mark McLaughlin. The third row of the grid, Peter Behag and Graham Smith. The fourth row of the grid, Hugh Gartley and David Partridge. The fifth row of the grid, Ross Holden and Shane Flynn. We saw him earlier. And the sixth row of the grid, Roman Cloder and David Good. And another, let me see, four competitors in the field, making a total of 16. Included in that last four, Neil Israel and Bob Power. Both had dreadful practice sessions yesterday, many problems. We've already seen Power come good earlier on today and take a win. Perhaps he can do that again in this particular race. And there is the pole sitter, John Crook, car number 18, the leader of the Australian Formula 2 Championship after five rounds. Melbourne businessman, a very self-confident and accomplished driver alongside him, Queenslander Derek Pingle in the Corinthian Doors entry. These Formula 2 cars all identically prepared. They have the 1600cc single camshaft Volkswagen Golf engines, about 105 or 185 brake horsepower. There's Arthur Abrahams, car number 19, also from Melbourne, a very professionally turned out team. Also a hard charging competitor with now 30 seconds to go before the start of this round six. It'll be held over a journey of 20 laps. And these top three fellows in the first two rows of the grid are really going to get stuck into it. Mark McLaughlin in there as well. Car number nine, the works elfin entry from South Australia being handled by Tony Edmondson, a former sports sedan great in Australia. Had problems yesterday with a crash in practice, but he's back on the grid and hopeful of a fine result following his win from last weekend's Oran Park round. There's Crook and Pingle on the front row. You can just hear in the background a little crunch of gears as the drivers now to press the clutch, select first gear. Ten seconds remain before the start. The revs build. Flag up. The field away. Pingle makes a lightning jump in car number five. John Crook into second place. Abrahams into third. Peter Behag in car 14. And coming through the field, Bob Power on the inside there in the orange and white car and Neil Israel. And it's Pingle off too deep into turn one almost taking out the volvo sign and that makes it two bad starts for him so far today he's had a very very bad run indeed however it's going to put uh, john crook in front as they come down to the dunlop bridge for the first time starting to spread themselves out on the downhill run now to valvoline corner there's the gap first over second just look at crook run hard number 18 to the top of the hill He's not only separated the field, he's spread eagle the field inside three quarters of a lap. Goodness me, what a bad day for uh, Derek Pingle. Unbelievable. Left on the grid in the uh, racing car event earlier, and now having won the start in the Formula 2 round, has gone off at the, uh, at the first corner. <laughs> well, it's a bad day for him, of course, uh, Derek Pingle. Sponsors had a, the event. Yes, had a big hand in the sponsorship of the event under Pingle Homes. However, I think he's uh, got back on the, uh, the tail of the field, but there's our race leader at the moment, John Crook, doing superbly, very much the man in Formula 2 racing in Australia this season. Had a sensational uh, day at uh, Oran Park in Sydney last weekend, spun in front of the field and came back through it. Today, he is just blitzing them. Comes over the top of Motorcraft Hill, down the roller coaster through 4X Bend. Solar Houses entry, John Crook will lead across the line with two laps completed and 18 remaining. Performances so far in the series for John Crook, a second at Simmons Plains. We were there with Seven Sport. He was the winner down at basketball near uh, Hobart, the winner at Service Paradise, you may recall. Last weekend finished seventh in the results, yet finished ahead of the entire field in the race after being penalised one minute for allegedly jumping the start. There's car number 14, Peter Behag. Oh! can't afford to do that too often with these cars. You'll damage the underside of the side pods of the car and not only that, damage the tyres. But he's charging pretty hard at the moment, as you can well see. That gives you some idea of the undulation in this course as they punch down for this left-hander at Hungry Corner. These cars, a quick dab on the brakes, a change back to a lower gear, and they really get on the gas through that left-hander and up to the top of this hill. And it's a pretty rough ride in an open wheeler. Yes, I would think because of the 
number one, the layout of the circuit, and of course the condition of the hot mix on the circuit. It's a very physical afternoon's driving in a Formula 2. Good Neil, battle there. Neil Israel coming through with the pie entry, Wilco, in car 42, and behind him we saw Rob Power. There's Hugh Gartley in the middle of this bunch in the white car, but he's looking pretty dodgy here under brakes, and I think that's Ross Holden in car 75. That's right. Many and varied lines coming out of uh, Albi and Volvo. It's fairly cool up here today. The track temperature would be quite low, and these tyres are quite hard. So you can see that the equation here is uh, one of a slippery situation. There's car 17 into the pit area. Barry Johnson. Neil, these drivers better steer clear of sponsoring races. Pat Romano did it and crashed at Amaru, and uh, Derek Pingle's done it and crashed here. It's a bad omen, isn't it? Ross Holt leading this bunch for a minor placing battle. Hugh Gartley, the next man, then followed by Neil Israel. And coming into the background is car number eight, Bob Power, in the Rolt RT3, the winner of our racing car event earlier on today. His problem in practice was every time he turned the car right, it wanted to stop. A rather unusual sort of a problem. They ultimately traced it to the wrong float level heights in the carburetor of the car. Oh, gee, Ross Holden is uh, getting a bit nervous here because they're breathing right down his neck. Israel's had a fairly ordinary run so far this year in the Formula 2 Championship as well. He didn't scratch up any results from Simmons, but he picked up an eighth down at Baskerville. Didn't finish in Service Paradise when he unfortunately broke an axle. You may recall he qualified quite well there. Then was third last weekend at Oran Park. Had bore fuel and electrical problems yesterday in practice. So he's attempting now to thread his way through the field. It's not an easy job. The car's so close, it's not an easy job in Formula 2 racing, passing. Here comes when Israel. You, when you go onto a circuit like Lakeside with all the bumps in it, it becomes almost treacherous. Well, they do not even lift off through that left-hander down the main straight. It's a great sight to stand there and watch them throughout practice when they're really charging hard. Israel moves up one spot with that uh, manoeuvre. He's now in fifth place on the racetrack. Hugh Gartley appears to have a few woes with the handling of his vehicle at the moment. The car sliding around a little bit. Bob Power getting closer all the time in car eight from Toowoomba. So there's Israel here, just poking the nose out. Power goes out wide. Israel up on the outside, just trying to faint it, but he's been caught out too wide. Yep. He nearly fainted a very good move then and got through on Holden, but in turn was passed by Hugh Gartley. So he's been caught just a, a little asleep in that manoeuvre. And all the time, people like John Crook and Arthur Abrahams are disappearing into the distance. All checking mirrors. Uh, Israel pulling out in 42. Power could be the mover. Derek Pingle coming through the field in car number five. He's recovered from going off here at Albion Corner. Here he comes. Last car on your screen at the moment. So the Corinthian doors entry, car five. Pingle, who's also got to be the master of bad luck in Australian motor racing at the moment. A seventh from the first round, ninth at Baskerville, a second at Surfers Paradise but then crashed last weekend at Oran Park and has spent the last week trying to get this car straight again. He picks up another spot there as he passes car eight, Robert Carr. And Pingle now on the hammer of uh, Neil Israel. Gee, hasn't he come out of nowhere? He's in seventh spot on the racetrack, having come from last. Well, he's managed to carve his way past Bob Power without too much trouble. Next on his list is Neil Israel. He dives to the inside through here this is going to be very difficult Holden looking at his mirrors Israel dodging around Gartley not aware of any of this at the moment and Pingle out wide this time with warmer brakes warmer tyres and perhaps a slightly cooler mine but he could make up a spot through Volvo Carousel and Bob Power runs a little wide gets the tyres out into the dirt this time Pingle Sitting right behind Neil Israel, moves to the outside. All the formula for a disaster here. Something goes wrong. What that a manoeuvre yeah, by it was Pingle. magnificent. That was a very a brave piece of driving. Gee, he did a good job there. Gartley, 44, just ahead of him. Look how hard he's charging up into this top loop. The car understeering a little bit then, and Israel gets out of the grass as well. Comes off with more speed from the hill tries to slingshot out from behind Gartley. I think he might just have ranged up alongside. Now he goes through. He's after hold, and this will be the, the comeback of the year if he can get up into a major top three result here. Coming up on Ross Holden. Holden the... Uh, as they swing out of the turn. And we'll see what he can do with uh, Holden in number 75. 
and will do it beautifully. Got him. Holy smoke, he's up to fourth place. He's certainly the mover in this field. Keeping in mind he won the start, but let's recap. The top three on the scoreboard, John Crook is your race leader. Arthur Abrahams is in second. Behag is third. Welcome back to Lakeside as round six of the Australian Formula 2 Championship continues. We're looking at Derek Pingle in car number five. Off from last position after his first corner incident up into fourth place. It's a great drive and there's third place, Peter B. Hag in car number 14. And they tell me at the moment down in the pits we've got Pat Welsh. Thanks, man. There's a couple of cars into the pits already. Mark McLaughlin, who was fourth, uh, fourth fastest on the grid earlier, didn't even get to start with front end problems, and uh, it's being uh, his vehicle now being wheeled away to further attention. But the big news in this race, as you've already highlighted, is the performance of Derek Pingle. He blew a clutch in that first racing car championship round that was the first of our telecast races today didn't even leave the starting grid they have replaced the clutch in 42 minutes the guys from the backup crew are claiming that is something of a record down here very proud of themselves but then they had a look of abject horror shortly after that when they saw the cloud of dust at the top of the main straight as Pingle went off he has since gone back into the race and after crashing last week it's been a dramatic week for Derek Pingle and his backup crew but they're out on the track again Again, and it's been an absolutely fantastic performance that they've got this far in the race so far. Thank you, Paddy. Well, there's our race leader, John Brook, in number 18. And leading comfortably at this stage, we're keeping an eye on uh, Derek Pingle. There's the gap back to our second place driver. For Abrahams. Changed a clutch in 42 minutes. I can't change a wheel in 42 minutes. <laughs> That's tremendous, isn't it? That's really hard work from his crew. It shows uh, dedication that they wanted to pick up points as well. I guess it would have been easy, uh, with not so much time to play with. They've called it quits for the day. It's funny how luck goes like that. Often when you start a bad day, particularly in motor racing for some strange reason, a bad day becomes worse for another strange reason. It uh, really is unusual, but so many times you see it in the pits as fellows continue to trip over more and more bad luck. This bloke amazes me, you know, uh, John Crook. He doesn't have to be pushing it as hard as he is, but uh, he hasn't attempted to back off at all, has he? He is unbelievable. An effervescent sort of a character. He just bubbles all day long, continually tells you uh, uh, how enthused he is for racing and what he plans to do for the future. And I think he's going to be a promotable young driver as he continues his career. We've spoken about him before. He's a former Australian karting man very good in sprint carts and uh, has adapted very well to Formula 2 in only his first season. This is his first competitive drive at the Lakeside Circuit. He's come to terms with it pretty well. Bear in mind, they couldn't practice here on Thursday because the touring cars had the track tied up. They only did two 20-minute sessions on Friday, another two 20-minute sessions on Saturday, and he's doing so well. And at the moment, I also understand that car number 19, Arthur Abraham's car, is misfiring quite badly. So he's in second place and will drop back even further. I think perhaps even to the uh, clutches of Derek Pingle, we'll have to wait and see. We we'll get some idea of the gap here. It's an enormous gap back to second place. You can't even see Abraham's in the distance. So John Crook has got virtually the entire straight length of the Lakeside Circuit up his sleeve. Very bad luck for Arthur Abraham, who last weekend was leading the round of the championship. There he is in the Ignis entry. Yes, oh, and the car sounds horrible. Ugh. I'll tell you what, it's going to be lucky to, to see out the full distance. We'll wait now to see whether or not uh, Pingle... The up Pingle is into third place, I understand. And who knows, it, uh, he could well pick up second. And that will be quite a drive from the back of the field, even allowing for the bad luck of our second place to Abrahams at the moment. That would be the man of the match award yep. for the day for Game sure. Game set and match. Harry Johnson about to be lapped here very shortly by the race leader. Yes, last weekend Abrahams had a rear wheel fall off the car at Oran Park when he was in the lead of the race, so it's certainly not a good season for him. He was the winner of the first round at Simmons Plains, crashed at Baskerville for the second round ninth at Surface Paradise when he had more problems. In fact, I think he split a rim in the car and did finish last weekend. No stopping this man here. He leads the championship with 102 points. His nearest rival is Bob Power. He's got 91 points. 
second and third place in the championship at the moment. Young Mark McLaughlin in car number nine, the elephant that's tucked away in the pits at the moment with 78. So this fella's the only bloke who's got luck on his side, or perhaps it's just damn good driving and preparation. And as we forecast, uh, just back behind the leader, Derek Pingle is closing very rapidly on Abrahams now. So he's going to finish second here. Bob Powell, you notice with the front left-hand side of the car damaged and the wing dragging on the ground, so he's come to grief. And here's the gap back to second place. Gee, it's a long, long gap. Now, in fact, that's Shane Flynn, car 77. So it's even further than that back to second spot. So he must have half a lap. There's Derek Pingle. And there's Arthur Abrahams. That was the passing manoeuvre. So Pingle's now second on the racetrack. What a drive. He's not going to pick up the race leader, not unless John Crook runs into all sorts of uh, problems. However, there's Pingle going down to Albion Volvo turn, the carousel, in the Corinthian Doors entry, race sponsor. He's done, he's done a lot himself for the coverage today. He's figured in a lot of it coming from the back of the field after going off. On the last lap, for the leader, anyway. Pingle's coming around to get the last lap board. So there we are. It's almost half the racetrack between first and second. But you can't deny this man has turned into a mighty drive, Eric Pingle. Here's the leader. Running into some slower traffic on his last lap. Last lap board being prepared at the moment. So as they come up to the top of Motorcraft Hill, down the roller coaster that brings them down to 4X corner. Coming back now onto the straight. And flag being prepared now as they go across the strike. And the checkered flag out. John Crook will take the win. And Derek Pingle, here he is, still working his way up towards Motorcraft Hill for the final time. That's the gap from the race winner to the man who's come from the back of the pack to place second. And an outstanding drive from Derek Pingle. Here's the last turn comes up for him, 4X Ben. I wonder whether Abrahams has hung on for third. I would rather doubt it. I doubt it. I think Bihag is going to end up getting third. Abraham's car was very, very sick indeed, and Bihag was hauling him in very quickly. So an entertaining round of the Pingle Holmes Australian Formula 2 Championship round six here today at Lakeside. Race honours, of course, go to John Crook. And what about uh, the drive turned in by Derek Pingle from the back of the field? Well, as Neil said, you've got to get the man of the match award. <laughs> Terrific performance. And uh, BHAG was in third position, car number 14. So that was a great drive from John Crook in 18 and consolidates his series lead, goes on now to 132 points in the Australian Formula 2 Championship. And I think they're going to have a lot of trouble catching him from here. There's only a few more rounds to come. They go off to Adelaide, to Malala in South Australia, Calder and Winton. Let's have a look at the Castrol scoreboard, though, and check the top three after round six. John Crook, the winner. Derek Pingle, second. Peter B. Hag in third.